attention. I have a patient, Mr. Hoshi Ito, who is receiving 0.9 sodium chloride at 120 mils per hour. And his IV solution is almost finished and the tubing is due to be changed. So I'm going to go ahead and take Mr. Ito's chart and I'm going to confirm that the patient is receiving the correct fluids at the correct rate and I'm going to take my, um, my solution my IV flow record or the mark and compare that against my physician's orders. So I have Hoshi Ito, medical record number 5891351323. His date of birth is 3-2-1950. And he came in the telemetry unit with patients um, from an exploratory lab appendectomy. He is NPO and he is receiving IV fluids. And the order for his IV fluids, as also documented on the IV flow sheet, is 0.99% sodium chloride at 125 milliliters per hour times three liters. He currently has the first liter bag hanging, so I will continue it as long as with my assessment, I've determined that it is safe for him to receive, meaning he doesn't have any assessment findings of fluid volume overload, um, crackles in his lungs, severe edema, anything that's compromising also his breathing. And I did assess him this morning, and he looks fine. And I also assessed his IV site, which is a right forearm peripheral IV. And that looked good. There was no inflammation, no infiltration. But I will assess it again because things can change. So I have confirmed my physician's order. So I'm just going to be working my IV solution flow sheet. I'm planning is I want to make sure what his outcomes are. And he is MPO, so we're trying to main, maintain hydration. I might want to teach him when to notify me if he has any soreness at that site, it's red, if it becomes disconnected, that he should call right away, or if he has any difficulty, of course, breathing or any other um, symptoms of overload. And now I'm going to go ahead and gather my equipment. For this, I'm going to need alcohol wipes. I'm going to need the correct IV solution, and I will do my three checks with that in a minute. New tubing, so I need the correct tubing, which is going to be Continue solution set. It's primary tubing, and on here it says that um, the drop factor is 10 drops per one milliliter, and it's not expired. I'm going to need a label to label my tubing. My and solution. my solutions. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm also going to bring some tape into the room just in case I need to stabilize the tube. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to confirm that I have the correct solution. So through the back, I can see that it is not expired, November 11th. Okay? And I'm looking for Hoshi, Hoshi Ito, and I know his medical record number. He's allergic to morphine. I see that it is 0.9 sodium chloride, and one liter or 1,000 milliliters is to be hung. The rate is going to be at 125 milliliters per hour or I'm going to have to do a calculation because I'm not using a pump, so I'm going to have to figure out how many drops per minute the patient is going to receive. So I'm going to have to do a calculation for that. Not expired, and it's times three liters. This is, will be his second liter bag. Okay, I'm going to check it again. Hoshi Ito, correct medical record number, date of birth. Not, he's allergic to morphine, no morphine here. And then I'm giving one liter, 0.9 sodium chloride, it's going to be at 125 mils per hour. I'm also going to calculate the drops per minute, and it is not expired. That's two checks. I'm going to open it now. I want to verify that it's not leaking, so it has not been punctured, so it would potentially be contaminated, and it's not cloudy, and there's no precipitates or anything in there, and it's clear, colorless. Okay. So then I'm going to do my third check for Hoshi Ito, date of birth allergic to morphine, and then I have 0.9 sodium chloride, 1,000 milliliters, and it's supposed to be given at 125 milliliters per hour, and it is not expired. And it's times three liters, this will be his second bag. The first is almost. So now I am going to do my drug calculation, okay, and it comes out to 20 drops per minute is what I'm going to have my solution at. 
and I figured that out and the rate that the doctor ordered, the drop factor, 10 drops per milliliter. Then I also want to indicate that this is the correct patient, so I'm going to fill his name, Ito Koshi, and I'm writing the date, my initials, and that this is bottle number two. And then it's an eight hour rate, 125, 1,000 divided by 125 is eight. That's an eight hour rate. So I'm going to circle, it says rate per hour. And then I'm going to follow that little middle chart down in every place that there's a line I'm going to draw. And this tells me as the bottle is emptying, is my rate still going to be the same? So for example, I'm going to be starting this at 0900. So then at 10 hundred, I should be at the first line. At 11 hundred, I should be at the second line, and so on. So I'm writing those times. I'm anticipating at this point that my bag will be due to be changed at approximately five o'clock this evening or 17 hundred. This is a sticker that can be put on the side never want to cover what's in the bag, the contents of the bag, so I am going to line up my first line with the arrow with the number one. And it says place arrow even with the one. So I come down, and so you can see, for example, I should be here by 1100. So that's labeled. I'm going to hang up my solution. Next thing I'm going to do is open my tubing. I'm going to take the paper off of it. The first thing I want to do with my tubing is I want to clamp it with the roller clamp. So I clamp it with the roller clamp, my tubing. And then what I'm going to do is I want to spike that, but I want the air to be purged through all of these ports. So as the solution comes down, I'm going to hold the port upside down so that the fluid displaces the air that's in that little cap. I'm going to gather it in my hand. And I going to, I'm keeping, maintaining sterility of both my spike and twisting and pushing. I'm not touching that spike. I'm only touching up here, pushing and twisting. If you bend, sometimes that spike is sharp. It can actually puncture, so you be careful that you don't puncture. And then I am going to fill my drip chamber a third of the way, and there's a little line that indicates where it should be filled to. And now I'm going to hold my tubing so that it's comfortable for me. Okay, And I'm going to need to have something that I can waste the solution or a garbage can is adequate as well. Okay, but you don't want to contaminate the end of your tubing. So now very carefully, holding this upside down and very slowly, I'm going to open my roller clamp and watch my fluid come down. Very carefully and slowly. So it's, been, it's through the first cap and it's purged the air in the first cap or the first port, rather, excuse me. And as I come to the next port, I'm also going to want to invert that. And it always goes slower under the area of the roller clamp. Okay, and I'm purging the air from that last port. Okay, and then I'm clamping it shut. Then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to check for any air bubbles. and there's no air. It's all clamped off. And the last thing that I do is label my tubing. So I'm going to put the date and the time. And then I'm going to put the date and the time that it may be changed. And that will depend on your facility policy. Standard seems to be 72 hours or three days. So I'm going to indicate three days from today and the same time, would be 72 hours, and my initials. And I'm going to put it up higher so that if this were going to be used on a pump, it's not going to occlude or obstruct the tubing from being inserted into
And I'm just going to do another check just to verify that again, this is Hoshi Ito and that he is receiving, it is a liter of 0.9 sodium chloride and it's not expired and I am going to be running it at an eight hour rate, which is 125 mils per hour or 20 drops. Um, I am going to take my solution and go into the room. Okay, and I also need my alcohol wipes. Good morning. change your IV tubing and the IV solution that you're receiving, Mr. Ito. Can you go ahead and just tell me your name again? Hoshi Ito. Good. And your date of birth? 3-2-1950. Good. Okay. And what are you allergic to? Morphine. Okay. And let me just check your medical record number. Very good. Okay. Mr. Ito, what I'm going to do is this IV site that you have right here, um, the tubing that's connected to it, and the solution's almost done, so I'm going to hang new solution, and then I'm going to hang new tubing because that's expired today, okay? So I'm just going to take a peek real quickly at your IV site. Do you have any questions for me? You, you shouldn't feel anything, okay? It shouldn't hurt to do this at all. Okay, and I'm looking at the site, and there's no inflammation, no infiltration. It's warm to the touch. It doesn't feel cool like the solution in the bag. It's not swollen, so it looks like it's still working. It's dripping. It's um, continuing to drip, so it looks like it's infusing well. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do first, then, is I'm going to clamp the old IV, okay? And then I'm also going to clamp at the catheter site, the side clamp here. Okay. Tubing for my other solution, have that very close to me, close to the patient's site. Okay, I'm gonna loosen that cap just a little bit, but I don't want it off at this point. Okay, I'm just going to unscrew the old, and keeping this sterile, I'm going to clean it with alcohol, the port, Good. And again, I'm not letting it drop and touch the skin. And I'm going to gently take this cap off and not allowing that to be contaminated. And then I am going to quickly and secure that, keeping it together. And then I am going to open Mr. Ito's side clamp on his tubing start the new infusion at 20 drips per minute. So I'm going to begin, I'm looking at my second hand, and right there is one. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's five drops in 15 seconds, which will be 20 drops per minute. Looks good, Mr. Ito, I'm just going to I'll tape that just a little bit. It's not in your way. Looks good. Okay. And what I'd like you to do is call me if it's bothering you, if it feels swollen, if it gets becomes disconnected or you feel wet, if you have any shortness of breath or anything else, okay? Do you have any questions for me? No, that's all? Yeah, that's it. Okay, you're doing really well. I'm just going to get my garbage out of your way. Can I do anything else for you while I'm here? No, I'm good. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that the bed is in lowest position, side rails are up, patient is comfortable, has his call light in reach. I'm going to take my old equipment and I'm going to dispose of it through hospital policy. The tubing will go in the garbage can. If there is still solution, I will drain it into the sink and then throw out the bag, clean up, wash my hands, and then I'm going to go out and document that I hung one liter of 0.9 sodium chloride at 125 mils per hour, or 20 drops per minute, and that this is bag number two of three liters that Mr. 
Ito is supposed to be receiving. And then I'm going to go back and check on Mr. Ito, his physical assessment, and also check the IV insertion site at a minimum of every two hours to make sure that that is not infiltrated or it's not getting red or infected or um, inflamed.